Hello everyone, welcome to Weed Shop 3. In today's video, I'm going to be covering the first part of a multiple episode guide. And this is just going to be tips and tricks on Weed Shop 3. Now I just want to thank Stony Mike as well as Cabretti and Fon Fon for creating this text guide that I'm going to be using to create this content. They actually have a Steam guide for this game and I'm going to link it in the description below. So I'm basically just doing a video guide of their text in a way and I'll probably add in some other things later on because there is some things that isn't necessarily covered in this guide. So I'm not going to be completely plagiarizing this guide but definitely check out the guide if you want a text document to go off of instead of a video. With that being said, let's go ahead and get into it and this first section is growing. So when you first start growing, your setup's going to look something like this. You'll have a paint bucket, you'll plant your seeds, whatever you have to water them, things like that. And if you're playing on a harder difficulty later on in the game, you can actually get mold on your weed. You can get spider mites, russet mites. So we're going to go over all of that today and we're going to look at these setups. So the first thing that you're going to want to do after you get to the level to buy it is go over to the computer go to the dope market and we're going to go right here to equipment and right here you have different things like pots setup storage and workstations so we're looking at the setups so i'm not sure what level you actually unlock this on because it doesn't show me now but you'll eventually get a small ghetto setup and what that allows you to do is place your pots on a setup and you can pretty much plant everything at once you can plant, harvest, remove broken pots, apply supplements to the entire grow setup at the same time. And this also allows you to attach components which give boosts and various stats for like growth speed or even the yield. So things like lights, the ventilation system and watering for your plants can be done through the setup. Instead of having to go through and manually like water things, you can just, you know, go over here. And you can see I have the chance to hit Z to water and that will water every single plant so I don't have to click on each pot and manually water it that way. If I really wanted to, I could click on this setup, hit X. I can hit customize components and I can switch out the ventilation, lighting, and pump automatically when those are um, at 0% and broken. If you have a station with a lot of broken pots, I'm trying to find somewhere where I don't have anything currently going so this one I can actually hit X and hit C to remove all of the pots and then I can add back fresh pots so that is why you want the setup and in order to use the setup efficiently you're going to want to keep up with the components so you're going to go to the components tab and as you can see here they have stats so there's the ghetto basic pump lighting and ventilation so this will give a quality boost for the ventilation and it lasts for 30 minutes so you're gonna have to keep buying these to replace uh, this ghetto light will actually give you more yield for your crop and this will actually boost the growth speed so that's the lighting it lasts 30 seconds and then this is so that you can water your plants this actually isn't needed early game you can actually not buy these and just water them manually if you want to save money but I recommend just to go ahead and buy this so you don't have to water each thing individually. And then as you progress, as you can see, you get better things. And even down further here, you can see that this actually has mold resistance. It has spider mite resistance. And then if you scroll all the way down, you can see better things down here. And it'll boost quality, you know, durability, things like that start to improve. So... You'll need those to start growing your crops. Now, when you get the grow set up, like I said, most of it, you're just going to click on it, hit X for advanced settings, and you can add supplements. Like for this one, I have 10 pots per setup. Uh, when you first start, I think you'll have four. So I'll actually, if I'm wanting to use supplements, I have to have 10 supplements. So like right now, if I tried to apply this grow boost, it would only apply it to two of them because I don't have 10 of them, if that makes any sense. So the uh, pot level and plant level also is something to take into effect. So as you can see here, we go to the dope market and look at the seeds. There is levels for each sort of seed. And as you get later on in the game, there is better levels. 
uh, with more THC, which we'll get into later, and more yield. So that's also going to affect the uh, quality is the level. And also the type of pot that you grow in is going to affect the quality. So if we go back to equipment and hit pots, so you can see here there's different leveled equipment. So there's one, two, three, and four would still be in the best and different durabilities and different water capacity. So for instance, if you grow a level two seed in a level one pot, it's going to reduce the quality pretty much. So in the guide for these components, like the lighting, the water, and the vents, um, this guide actually recommends to not do that until you start growing purple haze and anything after, because early game, you're just trying to maximize those profits. So if you're building, or if you're making OG Kush, AK-47, and life's good, don't really invest in it. But once you start getting into purple haze and some of these other ingredients down here, other seeds, my bad then you should probably start using components. And as for supplements, it recommends that mid to late game, the highest level grow boost will save you money by reducing durability loss on pots, components, and other supplements. So we'll actually take a look at that because I have it unlocked. So you're gonna go to supplies and we'll scroll all the way down to the grow boost hardcore. And as you can see, it boosts the grow speed. So that in turn means that you're growing your seeds faster so that you're not actually having to replace stuff so often and it can save you money. As far as the strain goes, like we can see here, always grow your most recent strain that you have unlocked. Now, later on, I'm gonna show you through like Cellfy. Um, the reason that you don't wanna just make like, for instance, I don't just wanna get Maui Wowie. I wanna have a good variety and I'll actually show you now is if you go to the Cellify app, you want weed variety. So this will give you a stat boost and we're going to get into that later on. But you want to be growing at least seven different weed strains to essentially get this top boost of 20%. Probably doesn't make sense now in this video. We're going to cover that later on. I don't really want to get into that just for the growing video. Now we're going to go over some of the debuffs that you can get on your plants if you're playing on any difficulty above chill mode. So if you go to settings and game, dif game difficulty, I apologize, you're going to have chill and then average and then trippy. So I believe anything from average to trippy, you will start getting like uh, mites, mold, things like that that can actually debuff your plants. So now I want to talk about the debuffs that you can get on your plants if you're playing on a difficulty higher than chill. So if we go to settings and then gameplay, you can see there's three difficulty modes. There's chill, which you will not get mold, spider mites, or russet mites. If you go to average, you will get mold, spider mites, and russet mites. And then if you go to trippy, obviously you'll get them as well. And then trippy enables some other things that I'm not really going to cover in this video because we're just talking about growing. So the first thing that you can get on your plants is mold. And mold reduces the quality of a plant the longer that it's growing while infected. So if you leave your plants unharvested, it will have a much higher chance of it getting moldy. And this can actually spread from plant to plant. So you want to use the uh, mold prevention or the cure mold if it pops up. And if you harvest the plant while it still has mold, the quality will be drastically lower than if you cure it. So this can bring down the quality average of your seeds that you're getting. So that means that you're getting less money for your plant. So you definitely want to be trying to cure the mold. And again, if you come over to the PC, go to the dope market and then supplies healers you can see there's anti-mold spray mold cure things like that that you can use so be sure to keep those on hand if you can but the second debuff i want to talk about is spider mites and spider mites will slow down and ultimately stop your plants from growing and you can prevent this by using supplements like i shown just a second ago or you can cure it after your plants have been affected and this will also spread from plant to plant if you leave it untreated the third debuff that I want to talk about is russet mites and these will stop your plants from growing and actually start reducing the yield. So you can see here on this one I have 143 grams. If this had russet mites it would actually start dropping the yield down and this can be prevented with supplements but 
They're unaffected by our protections offered by ventilation and russet mites only affect seeds that are level three and above. So as you can see here, um, if we look at the levels, so anything starting with blueberry and above, you can get russet mites on. So you definitely want to have supplements ready for that as ventilation doesn't help whatsoever. So now let's talk about quality. So quality starts at 50% instead of 100%. So at 50%, you'll actually get your full retail for your crop. So I'm going to show you here if we go to the Selfie app. Um, so if you have good quality, you can see this one is 90%. At 50%, you will have the full recommended retail price, and anything above 50% will give you a cash and XP bonus. The best way to increase the quality of your seeds is to have better components that gives quality buffs, or to use a quality booster supplement. Or late in the game, you can use the growth field to get 100% quality without any supplements. This is something that I forgot to cover in the video, however it's still important, and that is quality. So quality affects how much your customer will pay for your flower and package merch inside your shop. And I'm going to put a screenshot on the screen now of those, and you can kind of tell the quality differences and the kind of boost that they give. And like I was just saying before, you can boost the quality by using different uh, boosting components better pots, or using the growing field or supplements. And that's going to be it for episode one of Weed Shop Tips and Tricks. And there's going to be more parts to this covering all aspects of the game. So if you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Be sure to tune in to part two. See you guys.